Hey folks, this is Aman Merchant over here, the founder and chief optimizer Epic360 and your host at the Epic Living Show. Our mission at Epic360 is to help you optimize and upgrade your physical and mental performance so that you can get to that next level of greatness, that dream goal that you have, it becomes easier, faster, simpler, and fun for you. And why is that important? Well, because it's about, not about being great, but getting to great. I feel that the majority of us, probably 99.9%, .9 are born hopelessly average. But we all have that extraordinary ability to get to great. But it requires us to make that investment, that struggle, in terms of developing ourselves and growing ourselves. The Epic Living Show is about unpacking and decoding those quirks, those habits, those strategies, and those tools that have been used by the highest achievers in the Middle East, Africa, and South Asia region. And this show is the first of its type to bring you that insight, that under the hood experience, those stories that have helped these high achievers get primed for whatever has come their way. They'll talk about those experiences, those tools they use, their failures, and what they encourage all of us to do. Now, if this was all just a motivational chat show, I would have failed and the show would have failed miserably in achieving its objective. Our goal is not just to inspire you, but to guide you to take purposeful action on changing at least that one habit, that one degree of shift that's gonna help you make that transformational shift to your personal journey of getting to greatness. So join us, make this epic shift, get to that epic journey of yours and be epic. All right, our guest on our inaugural Epic Living Show is uh, Valid Abulnaga, a dear friend and an amazing entrepreneur. Uh, he is the founder of Nafis, and on a mission to transform people's lives one breath at a time. A national judo champion, a celebrity breathwork master, a loving husband, an amazing entrepreneur, and uh, glad to have you here, Valid. Thank you for the nice intro. So, as you know, this whole thing about talking about epic living is to get inside your mind. And I know that you want to talk about getting inside your breath, yeah. but before we get inside your breath, I want to talk about epic journey. So the journey that you've gone through that has shaped you and left a mark. So I know that you recently moved to Bali. Uh, you've spent time in Egypt, in Saudi, in the US and in Dubai. What got you moving to Bali? Well, I've lived the last 20 years of my life in the Middle East. And over the course of the last few years in particularly and surrounding ourselves with nature and as we've grown and evolved as a family we've realized that being in Bali especially Bali with its wonderful gifts that it offers that magical island we wanted to be surrounded and immersed in nature and not only the nature element but of the transformational tribe you know it's a beautiful island that has yogis healers musicians conscious businesses light workers, lots of people who want to make change to the world and being part of that is something wonderful that as a family we're excited uh, to be part of. And I know that you, you travel a lot. So I know that Bali, of course, is now your, your current residence, but you travel for experiences. I know that you're also a Burning Man veteran. Uh, for those of us who don't know what Burning Man is, what would be your one line or one paragraph summary of what that experience is all about, uh, such that people can feel the transformation even when they've not been there? That's a tough one to answer in one line, but Burning Man is an experience. I think one of the most amazing take-homes I've learned throughout the Burning Man experience is when I first was there five years ago was that it's a communal effort. Community pays a big role. We're there to support each other, to help each other. We're there to grow together, to have fun together. And another key factor, which is one of the principles, is leave no trace. I've never seen anything like this. The cities build in the dust, in the desert, out of, in the middle of nowhere, and there's no trace left behind. You come take back that to your daily life or to your daily community and country, and you can make a wonderful difference. It is an experience, and I highly recommend it. So yeah, definitely, definitely go check it out. Well, I mean, we're in this beautiful space over here in Al Barari, in, yeah. the, in the background of nature and birds chirping, as you can see. Yeah. Uh, now, you've gone the other extreme as well. You've gone to the ice bath treatment with uh, the legendary master Wim Hof. Tell us what that was all about. Well, Wim has been a dear teacher. I've met him on multiple occasions and he's taught me quite a lot on the power of the mind, the power of the breath. I mean, he's proving to science today that the mind can do things in which science once said was impossible. You know, he's a 26 Guinness record holder and 
not only climbing Everest to the highest point without air, but he's swam the longest distance in freezing cold water. He's ran a marathon in the hottest place on earth. But I think what fascinated me the most out of him was when he did the controlled experiment of injecting himself with toxins, bacteria, and through breath work and through mindfulness and, and meditation, he was able to mobilize in his immune system. He was able to regain his, um, his strength and have no side effects or very hardly any. And he taught us the power of the mind for the ice. When entering the ice, it's a mental more than a physical challenge. You know, once you enter that ice and you connect with your breath and breath and you go into that deep meditative state, you're able to understand that time and space ceases to exist. It's a challenge, but you know, through dynamic stretching, a powerful mindset, and the breath, and changing the chemistry of your body, and understanding how you can regulate the inside, you can really sustain and you'd be surprised at how much longer you can withhold beyond your own limits. I mean, that's interesting because people go in that kind of experience and they have this fear of failing as well, right? Because like, you know, will I be able to do it? Is it like I've achieved so many things in life, but I can't crack an ice bath. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, moving on to talking about failures in that sense, I mean, is there a failure that you can think of that perhaps is a favorite failure of yours that, you know, maybe e either from a breathwork experience or from a other life experience? Um, I've had many, many failures in my life. And it only took me a long time to realize how these failures have been the greatest teachers that I've had. Failures in business, failures in relationships, partnerships. There's no favorite one <laughs> out of all these, but I guess rushing into making decisions really quickly has really affected me. I was impatient in the past and had I known then what I know now I would have dealt with many situations more calmly in a more relaxed manner but I, I rushed without proper analysis proper study it was maybe I listened to the wrong part of my gut feelings I can't remember but I, I, I was a quick decision maker and I think now with time with breath I'm composed I'm more calm and I'm more patient than I used to be well, as an entrepreneur, you've made various investments. So let me ask you in that same vein, you know, what's been a very worthwhile investment you've made in the, in the last, let's say, five years, whether it's investment in time, yeah. energy, uh, yourself? I think the greatest one has been myself. Yes, there's investment in businesses and projects and in real estate and so on, but the greatest one has been myself, and especially the last five years, the self-improvement, diving deep into my own consciousness and understanding the greater meaning of connecting with source. I didn't know what that was, you know, the spirit world, wonderful things. And through my journey with breath and shamanic breath work and, and meditation, I've really benefited from this investment of traveling to meet the grand masters, the founders of these, these different techniques in the world of breath work. And I think today I am grateful and have so much gratitude because of my teachers. I mean, investment wise, I mean, let's think about maybe, uh a hundred dollar investment perhaps that you have made in the last six months that has changed your life in a very interesting way? <laughs> nah, tough one to answer, but I think uh, maybe the, the, the last um, seven day non-fruit juice fast I did. So I invested in some company that provided me with these juice fast okay. for a detoxification program. I did a liver cleanse. I did a, you know, coffee enemas and all that kind of stuff for a deep internal transformation was kind of, I think, less than $100, but it really benefited me quite a lot. And I do that regularly. So that's once a year. But uh, I think that would Is be that my greatest investment. Is time in the year you do that? Is like no, I, you know, I, usually it's uh, when I feel down. It's usually once a year, not in a certain time, but some points when I feel my energy is low, I need a up uh, heave like a car, you know, in a car, you got to go get the oil changed. I know when it's time and when it's time, I really need some inner work done. And I'm wondering, you know, in the whole, uh, in the scheme of things that, you know, what's maybe, uh, you know, one view that you hold that a lot of people would disagree with, because maybe some people like juicing and some people do not. So in that same sort of vein of thought, is there something that you hold as a self-evident truth, perhaps, and others would disagree with? I think everything is relative. So some people like CrossFit, some people like yoga, some people like Pilates, some people like running mid-distance, long-distance marathons. Whatever fits you, you do. 
And that's the beauty when I started learning about breath work. There's many different types and techniques. Find what you're comfortable with. Find what resonates with you. Whatever it is, whatever juice, whatever fast, whatever diet, find what works with you. But I also suggest and recommend try multiple different types at least before you say, this is the one that works for me. Once you've tried them, then you can compare. And not only once, you know, you have a little bit of commitment and dedication and focus on whatever you're doing. So, you know, you don't just try something and say, it really didn't resonate with me. It's your state, it's your, 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 you know, the mindset. So try different things. So what do you ask yourself, I guess, from a question perspective, if something that you've tried doesn't work, I mean, what do you tell your brain to kind of get focused? Because it didn't work. Yeah. I, I would say, what's my current state? Am I thinking of something, is something, you know, in the background, whether it's stress, is it a um, finances, uh, health issue, overweight, uh, lack of sleep? So I'm always asking myself these questions. Why am I feeling the way I'm feeling? And if something didn't work, is it because of me or because of the practice itself? But what I've learned over the years is one key thing. It's gratitude. No matter what experience I'm involved in or outcome from the experience, I always tend to have extreme gratitude of whatever I experience because I realize the more I have gratitude and thanks, the more I'm given further in the future. Well, that's a nice shift to our second segment, which is, you know, epic hacks. Those things that you do under the hood that people don't see that uh, are making you stay primed for the day, for every hour of the day. So I guess let me begin with a very open-ended question, which is that on a scale of 1 to 10, how weird would you say you are? 10 being the, 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 the epitome. I... I... Compared to others or compared to myself, it's a, it's a weird question. So the weirdness of myself, I would put myself high up there on the scale. Not necessarily 10, the eight, nine mark, only because I am up for any challenge, any experiences. I hear about something new, I wanna try it, I wanna get in there. Well, other people would say, why are you doing that? Why do you put your body and your mind through such uh, physical harm? I'm like, it's not harm, it's an experience. I wanna understand what's on the other side, so. Yeah. So, so what's the weirdest thing you've done in the last year, year perhaps? Oh, the weirdest thing? Um, I just came back from Peru and I was in, involved in many, many sacred ceremonies. And one of the weirdest thing I did was a tobacco purge. So we drank a little bit of tobacco with eight and a half liters of water. And you purge from your system to cleanse yourself. So can you imagine drinking this very thick liquid of pure tobacco, but then drinking eight liters of water and then purging? Some people would say, why would you do that? I'm like, well, I'm cleansing the system in preparation for other things. And uh, while people call it torture, I call it cleanse. And that's kind of one of the weirdest things just about two months ago. Okay, okay. <laughs> Look, at, the, uh, uh, at Epic 360, we talk about the six pillars of high performance, which cover uh, you know, mindset, sleep, uh, mindfulness, nutrition, uh, movement, and fitness. So in your experience, in your life, which of these six pillars have had the strongest and the most powerful impact? And perhaps you can tell us something you do in that area that uh, someone could listen and start applying as well. I think the six pillars are extremely important and it's very hard to say one is more important than the next. It's an ecosystem. If one falls, it doesn't really balance. So it's hard to say, you know, your whole life experience comes together through these six pillars, the environment, your sleep and your nutrition, health and fitness. But if I had to choose one, I mean, I definitely say it's the mindset. Your mindset is the most important thing, whether it's the ice walking on fire, whether it's breath and, you know, there are many things in life that happen. You can break a leg before a vacation or you can have your house burned down, but it's your mindset. You can say this is an extreme devastation or you can say this is a blessing in disguise. So the mindset, and I've only learned this recently in the last couple of years in my life, the mindset of every incident that happens in your life is what can get you to the next level. The mindset of lack of sleep, of eating certain foods. Put your mind and shift it in a certain perspective. And I learned to try, and I'm still working on myself, to have a clear and positive mindset on everything in life. It's not easy, it takes training, but I think the mindset is really kind of the foundation of, well, another extreme pillar. I mean, it, it, you talked earlier about the the power of the, the, the mental side of things when doing an ice bath. I think yeah. you do, and have done something crazy in terms of holding your breath as well for minutes, not yeah. seconds. Uh, you're close to four minutes, I understand. I haven't cracked four minutes yet. I'm almost there, but 
I used to have it as a very competitive thing to do, reach four or five minutes, but now I no longer look at time. I used to always say, what's my time today when I retained? But it's no more competition, it's about holding it. Sometimes some person can hold the breath for 30 seconds while another holds it for three minutes. But the person holding it for 30 seconds could have a profound experience more than the three minutes. It's irrelevant. But I'm working on myself. I know the Guinness record was 22 minutes and uh, just broken recently this year by another Spanish diver, I think, for 24 minutes. So I was amazed watching the YouTube when in the pool with a diver and the competitors and the screen, he went to 24 minutes holding his breath underwater. Now, if I can't hold my breath four minutes, it's kind of a shame, but then again, everybody's different. And he took years and years and years of not only practice on the breath and the lungs, but on the mindset itself. So you learn from people like these, that you can go way beyond your own limits. So anyway, I'm working on it. But, but how would one begin that journey? So if you were to kind of guide someone in that process yep. who wants to kind of master breath work or master uh, the ice bath experience, what would be the first thing you'd suggest they do to get started in this? So in regards to withstanding the ice or in regards to withholding breath, the question that's always asked is why are you doing this? Are you doing this for healing? Are you doing this to uh, pass your own limits, to challenge yourself? But once you pass that, you have to understand that there are techniques. You have to be trained. It starts with the mindset. You have to have a positive mindset that you are able to overcome this limit, that you are able to conclude this, believe in yourself. Then you follow it up by dynamic stretching, you follow it up by a breath work, and then you go into the ice or any situation in life. So we teach people part of the ice bath facilitation, ice therapy, how to really work on the mind, how to mindfully you know, meditate, do the breath, and then get in the ice. I think language plays a key role in that experience, what you're telling your brain. Right? So if you were to kind of think through, and people talk about affirmations and yeah. the power of words, what words do you say to yourself when you're going through that experience? What are you telling your mind? Yeah. So my first ever fire walk, it was all yes. Yes, 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 yes. You know, it was literally no word but yes. Yes, I can. Yes, I will. And then you go through it positively and that separates the person who's going to burn the bottom of the feet to the person who can easily navigate through the fire or those hot stones and the same goes with the ice so I'm always repeating to myself this is warm I am in control this is warm I am in control and I just repeat myself connect to the breath stay connected I am calm there's many words that I use and then I guide people so when they remind themselves instead of heavily breathing to calm down the breath to visualize and focus on a warm ball inside where they're able throughout the breath work to send the messages quickly from their brain to their bodies to warm themselves up. So what language do you want to avoid using in that scenario? So when, when, when women give birth, for example, or when my wife did and we were doing hypnobirthing and they would always say, you avoid the word pain, you avoid the word um, uh, hard, harsh, push, there's certain words you eliminate. So stay, same thing, you eliminate cold, you eliminate freezing, you eliminate, you know, ice. Don't say those words and you focus on warmth, you focus on control. So yeah, there's certain words just avoid saying. I know you like um, reading as well. Uh, what perhaps maybe one or two, three books that you can think of that you would suggest people don't miss out on reading? Yeah, there's so many books out there today and so much wealth of information, but also I have learned from one of my teachers to be weary of the books you read. Make sure instead of reading something that could give you dis or misinformation, you read the right things. With endless books out there, you know, everybody's a national bestseller. So you just really, really uh, carefully choose what you're going to read. To me, uh, the books that have really sh helped shape some of the um, characteristics of my life came from a professor from Chicago and the book was called Flow, The Psychology of Optimal Experience. This is about flow state, how to get into it, what people feel from chess players to rock climbers. And it really even taught me until today, and this is over 15 to 20 years ago, about when you brush your teeth, how to get in a flow state and brushing your teeth. Dr. Mihaly, I forgot his last yep. name, incredible guy, book that I have bought as many, many gifts. The second book I've got by Robert Greene, which is called The 48 Laws of Power, and that book was ruthless, which is really about Machiavelli and, you know, Robert 
Kennedy and just, just, just kings and Roman emperors and what they did from deceiving to, to, <laughs> to shaping the way that their armies and, 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 and executives and troops formed. Anyway, that was a very powerful book. Those, yeah, those are my top two that I, that I always remember. Optimizing and upgrading performance requires ruthless discipline as well in many cases. So if you think of the things you do every morning that prime you for a day ahead, you know, especially when you're living in an environment which is very natural like uh, Bali, you need to be prepared for the, uh, the unknowns in many ways, I guess. You know, going through nature, you may be kind of seeing things, experiencing things. So what do you do every day? Like in the first hour or a couple of hours, that kind of really sets you up for success that day. I've always been an athlete. I played professional judo and track and field and through the martial arts, and as you know yourself, there's a lot of discipline. There's a lot of dedication, time, commitment in terms of really understanding and memorizing and flowing with the katas, flowing with the, the the moves over and over and over and over again, hundreds of thousands of times over the years. So martial arts has taught me discipline. And throughout my life, as I grew older and stopped competitive, you know, sports, I have discipline every single morning. Wake up early, cold shower, pray, meditate. Those are there by default. And then days change. Some days I run in the morning, some days I run later on in the evening. Every day uh, involves many different things. but. From a disciplinary perspective, I think getting the right amount of sleep and getting the right amount of nutritious foods is quite important. And um, that's about it. Those are the key things. So I think nutrition plays a very important part in your, in your venture at Nafa. So if you were to think of three types of foods that people should make sure they have every day in some shape or form, yeah. all the legal stuff, I mean, yeah. uh, what would those three foods be? Well. well on our Nefes journeys, we provide these transformational experiences, not only from excursions to adventure, but to food and nutrition. And the food and nutrition, it's a vegan and vegetarian food. But what we always tend to also focus on are the healthy snacks. People tend to make bad decisions and food choices because they're always hungry sometimes. When you have dried fruit, nuts, superfoods, you know, cacao or anything, your food decisions are a little bit better than when you're hungry all the time. We make sure that people drink water. You know, having to drink three to four liters of water a day is also challenging sometimes, but when you infuse the water with fruits, with lime and mint and you know, maybe cucumber or a piece of ginger, you allow our tribe members to drink more water. Of course, we avoid refined sugars, which is poison 100%, but you know, lots of fruits, lots of healthy, clean and fresh uh, food is there on the Nefes journeys. I think it's an integral and important part for your transformational process. If you wanna get somewhere deep in your consciousness, your state, which comes from your food and your belly and, and, and the way you feel, which comes from the food, I think is extremely important. What's your go-to energy food, if I can call it that? Oh, me? That if you are feeling low in energy, like, you know what, just either it's a snack or I don't know, a, a yeah. meal, what would you have? Most mornings, if not all, I have a smoothie and it's a superfood smoothie. My wife's incredible when she makes them and I kind of assist some days, but it's usually made, which includes all the, uh, you know, hemp seeds, flax seeds, chia seeds. It includes all the uh, whole, you know, um, homemade nut uh, milk, almond and cashew milk. So that really gives me a boost of energy in the morning. And when I have that, I know that my day is straight. So yeah, nice smoothies, sometimes green juices give me a nice kick and boost. Now, I'm also thinking you've talked about how, you know, Nafas puts people on a transformation journey. So you are really about creating impact. If someone like Warren Buffett or Bill Gates become generous, they call Walid Abul Naga, you're doing your eyes bath in Bali, and they say, Walid, we're just transferring $1 billion to you. Mm. But before we do that, you need to tell us how you will change people's lives with that. What will you tell them is how you'll use that money? Wow, right. that's a big one. I mean, you can, of course, keep it, but they don't, I don't think they'll take it. <laughs> no, I don't think so. You know, I think with such large amounts of funding comes a large responsibility, but it also comes passion. Some people are more passionate about animals and saving the whales and dolphins. Some people are more passionate about plastic. It's not necessarily my passion, but coming through a family of doctors, you know, my uncle and his sons and my cousins, I think I would most likely invest it in the healthcare 
of helping invest part of the money into R&D for cures to diabetes, to cholesterol, to cancer, and many other diseases. So once people are cured and healthy, they're able to function on their optimal levels. Helping in really so many illnesses in the world. I think investing in healthcare would be a wonderful option. I'm not really sure, it's a really big question, but you know, when that day comes, I'll probably put a nice plan for it. What's, I mean, again, living in Bali, I guess you also experience many unusual things. So what's perhaps, I know you've just moved there a few months ago, yeah. but what's the most unusual, maybe uh, life hack or performance hack that you've tried in that period that you feel has given you an edge that really is like your secret superpower? Ah, this Bali's full of magic. Every meal you have, every drink you have is fresh. It's made out of love. There's something very magical about that island. But I've also experienced something where I try, I try to, a powder called Kratom, and Kratom is just a, um, I think from the plant family of caffeine, but not caffeine because I don't drink coffee. So one teaspoon with some water actually gives you the boost of 100 cups of coffee. It's a very interesting thing. Kratom. <laughs> Kratom, yeah, I tried that and uh, I thought that was, um, it was a nice boost. So I'm not sure it gave me creativity slash energy. You know, I already finished my morning jog, yet I want to do another jog. So <laughs> something was a little bit funny about that, but yeah, that was, that was quite... Do you do that like every day? Is it... No, I mean, just once every couple of weeks, you know, you, if you need a boost, you have it. Hopefully that doesn't get into a bad habit because it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a very energetic drink. You know, I don't drink Red Bull or any of those um, sugary uh, mixed drinks, but I think it's kind of a healthy Red Bull maybe. Okay. <laughs> I don't know, I'm do, still doing my research, so finding out about okay. it. Okay. okay, and I mean, going to a phase of, I guess the show that talks about epic learning where we speak about a transferable skill that someone can choose to apply the very next morning. Because I don't want our show to be seen as something that people just get motivated by and then do nothing about. Yeah. We want them to take purposeful action, be inspired and guided to get into that flow, in that movement, in that momentum. Yeah. So what would be that one thing that they can try, uh, and you can teach us in the next 60 seconds perhaps, that if you do, I'm happy to kind of be your disciple in that regard. Okay. And you know, we can try that and, and hopefully if people also try it, it's gonna make a, a dramatic shift. In, in their lives in some shape or form. Uh, let's see if we can do it in 60 seconds. I think... Um, or whatever it is, I guess. Well, uh, throughout my last couple of years in learning and um, training in the breath, people aren't aware that what they're breathing is not just air. It's the sacred essence of life. It's energy. It's medicine. So the next time you take a deep breath or you're in the gym or need a boost of energy, you're about to fall asleep, just try it with me and you take three very deep and powerful breaths. Okay. So for example, you go... <gasps> And when you're taking it in, you're taking in prana, chi, nafas. And when you understand that this is energy that you're taking in, so for example, you're in the gym and you're about to lose your energy, just take those three breaths. Breathing through the mouth. Breathing in, fully in, and letting it out. That's just a way to kind of have a little spark of energy. So that's, so that's, one. So that's your secret hack. If someone's doing that, you're like, no, he's not smoking something. He's just, no, no, he's just, he's just, he's just you can take one and you'll feel, wow, I just took in some energy right now. So that's, that's, that's one good way to do it. Do you do that when you feel anxious as well? I'm just kind of wondering, because sometimes you, I mean, you've gone to, on stage performances, you've delivered to large audiences. You know, what do you do? Because I think it would be interesting to understand is if a, a tip or a hack like this yeah. can help people overcome a fear of public speaking, which as you know is the second biggest fear people have after death. Yes. So would a breathing hack like this help? Absolutely, but it wouldn't be the same one as this. This was a hack that I was recommending for working out, for a yoga pose, for just really boosting energy. But for a calming yourself down, breathe in through the nose and breathe out through the mouth, extended exhale. So for example, you're about to get on stage, three breaths. Even one deep meditative breath can act as that composure, putting you into calm. So, okay. calm the nervous system, calm yourself down. There's different types of breath for different types of circumstances. It kind of puts you back into state. state. You know, but it's about practice. When you practice being in a deep state of breathing and meditation, once you breathe that way, you're automatically connecting. It's like a muscle that you build over time. So it takes you back to that state. So I think that's a beautiful way for those, whether speaking or just about to rush into sending a reply to an SD email, just take that one composed, calm, slow breath. 
and get in that flow again. Get in that flow state. So, as we kind of come to the end of our show, I'd like to have you consider posing a challenge for our community, uh, the so-called epic challenge segment of our show. Yep. Because I want people to kind of get moving into doing something or being challenged because, you know, sometimes you don't just want to be educated, yep. you want to be challenged to get to that next level. So you can unlock your potential, your latent greatness. Mm. So what would perhaps be uh, a seven-day challenge that you could set the viewers of this show that if they choose to accept, yeah. will make a, a shift. Okay. I know all I've been talking mostly about has been the breath, but the challenge comes back to the breath. The challenge comes back to taking a moment for the next seven days, putting on your smartwatch or your smartphone an alarm. Four, alar four alarms a day, say nine, 12, three, six, like the compass, north, south, east, west, you put those alarms. And when they come on, as a reminder, just take 30 breaths. It's not a challenge to take 30 breaths, but take 30 deep breaths in through the nose and out through the mouth, just like we've done, but deeper and slower. <sighs> Going deeper and deeper with every breath, just 30 breaths, just over a minute. And with the last one, release and hold. And while you hold, Go into a meditative state where you're going to a happy space, a happy time, a childhood memory or a family holiday or something that keep, keeps a smile on your face. And you don't have to necessarily time yourself and see how long you withhold, but if you want to, then you can necessarily go ahead. But this will act as a muscle that you're training, whatever muscle it is, for when you need it in the future and you go to that state of breathing, it'll take you back to that calm meditative state that we've been talking about. I think this would be a wonderful, easy challenge. Four alarms a day, 30 breaths each, and let's try. At the Epic Tribe, try it and uh, see how that goes. Thank you, Walid. Thanks. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, everyone, be epic, be limitless. Thanks for the show. So thank you for watching the Epic Living Show. If you like this show, give us a thumbs up on YouTube or whatever other platform you've been watching it on. Uh, your feedback is very important to us, so please send us your comments and don't forget, be epic, be limitless.